Hi, everybody. My name is Nanika Edwards. I am a poet, artist, author, linguist, and educator from Trinidad and Tobago in the Southern Caribbean. Yes, I do wear many different hats. And um, in this video, I'd like to tell you about a special global diversity project that I have been working on for the past two months. And it is what I would call the Talk Trini Talk Challenge. And um, in this project, I have invited people from around the world to try make an attempt at reading a poem that I wrote that is written in Trini English. It's called Craft Market on a Next Level. And it's about a craft market that took place in Trinidad uh, at the end of April 2022. And uh, it is really just meant to be a fun project that celebrates global diversity on a certain level. By the way, I have to um, hope that no background noise is being picked up. I usually do my recordings in the wee hours of the morning, like you know, just after midnight, sometimes from midnight to three, four, five in the morning. Um, but I've opted to do it now in the afternoon. It's about three in the afternoon here on a Saturday. And I would just like to get to bed at a decent hour tonight. <laughs> so that's why I've decided to do this. So I do hope that no background noise is picked up and that even if it is, that it would not be distracting, fingers crossed. So just to let you know about this, pro a little more about this project, because this video is the one that's going to be launching the project. Uh, this project was inspired by the craft market that I just mentioned, but it was also inspired by a particular person. Because when the craft market took place, I did attend. And when I got home, I ended up writing a poem about the craft market. It actually started off in standard English. And then I felt that Creole English would have started, would have sounded better. So um, as the poem developed and I ended up writing it online on Facebook, um, as the poem developed, it ended up becoming a Creole English poem. And um, it got a lot of uh, favorable responses and I, um, actually spoke with somebody that I know who is from South Africa, who spent some time in Trinidad and who I knew had read, would may have read the poem because I sent it to her on WhatsApp. And I contacted her and I said, how did you like the poem? Did you understand it? And she said she really liked it. And she tried reading it in her best Trini accent. So that got me thinking, wouldn't it be really cool to have people from around the world trying to read this poem in Trini English or Creole English, even if, especially if they're not from Trinidad, you know? So that's what got this project started. And it has come together in super quick time. I think two months is pretty, pretty quick. And Essentially, what I aimed to do was to connect with countries around the world, hoping to connect with every continent, except for Antarctica, of course. And to a large extent, I have succeeded in doing that. I have been able to get submissions from around the world from almost every continent. The only one that I have not been successful with so far is Australia. But this project is going to take a couple months, I think, possibly, I don't know, possibly, to roll out on YouTube. So even though I'm going to actually start rolling it out before I have all of my submissions in, um, I am still going to try to connect with Australia, Australasia, um, or a couple other countries that I'm hoping I can still have included in the project. What I have tried to do as well is especially connect with countries where I think the accents are pretty, pretty distinct and, um, and countries that have accents that I think most people in the English speaking world would readily be able to recognize. Of course, there are other countries as well that may not fit that category, but that's ultimately what I aimed to do. I'm gonna keep most of the countries pretty 
um, if, you know, keep them secret until you see the videos, because I want to give you something to look forward to, okay, so you won't know, nobody's going to know, most people will not know, except for the volunteers, what countries are going to be um, featuring in this project. Now, when I do roll out the project, I'm going to be doing it in this order. I'm going to start with Trinidad and Tobago, and I actually am also going to be featuring my cousin, and I, uh, I want to give a, a hail out to my cousin, Cheryl, who um, read the poem representing Tobago, you know, representing uh, my brothers and sisters from the Isle of Tobago. Now, Trinidad and Tobago, that's one nation, but two islands, and we have distinct accents. So in this context of diversity, I did not want to leave Tobago out. So my cousin Cheryl will represent Tobago. So first, for maybe the first week or two, um, maybe even three, I don't know, depends on how it goes and how many submissions I get. I'll be focusing on Trinidad and Tobago so that people who um, are taking part, who have taken part in this project can hear what the poem was supposed to sound like. And if anybody wants to jump in and try, even outside of the scope of the project, people are welcome to do that, right? Take the Trini challenge, take the talk Trini talk challenge. Um, and so, so first I start with Trinidad and Tobago, then I go to the Caribbean, and then I do all of the continents in alphabetical order. So we start with Africa, go on to the Americas, then Asia, and then Australasia. Hopefully I'll have Australasia by the time I'm ready to do that. And finally, Europe. So that's gonna be how, um, that's gonna be the sequence of things for the rollout of the project on my YouTube channel right here on Big People Talk. Now, what you may be wondering, well, what is the point of this project? Well, there are several different goals. First of all, this project is ultimately a celebration of global diversity. I wanted to do a project that would um, celebrate uh, the, the unique beauty of different cultures around the world. Because I think sometimes we can be so insular and so inward looking that we may not really appreciate the beauty of of this global village that we all live in um so that's part that's the biggest part of this project the other thing is that um i used to teach english as a second language i'm not a trained esl english as a second language teacher but you know i did dive in at the deep end and i learned quite a bit and i was a very good teacher um, I don't think that you always have to be formally trained to be competent at what you do. Although if you're going to be an ESL teacher and you want to go down the road of go, take the route of getting, you know, formal training, I would not discourage you. Please do. Um, anyway, I've taught, I have had experience teaching ESL um, in different parts of the world. And from my experience, and I know that I'm not wrong, there does tend to be a certain preference in a lot of countries um, that have English as a second language schools for a particular accent. So um, students and teachers and the schools themselves often prefer like, um, you know, North American accents, British, the British accent, Australian accent, maybe South African accent. Um, they tend to prefer what I would call European accents, Caucasian accents. And, you know, if you have the look to go along with that, and you know what I mean, then better yet. So in this project, what I wanted to do was spotlight Creole English um, so that um, people would, so that people would uh, be able to start appreciating something that may be outside of what they would normally be exposed to. Um, in the world of English as a second language. And, you know, maybe people will start taking other accents, other accents in the English speaking world outside of the ones that I just mentioned a little more seriously, you know, like the Creole English or, um, you know, accents from the African continent, you know, things like that, because there's so many beautiful accents that are really not given any kind of 
um, real regard in the world of English as a second language. And, you know, I remember when I lived in South Korea, because I studied in South Korea, I did my master's in South Korea. Fortunately, I, I won a scholarship and I was able to go to South Korea to do my master's in international cooperation. And I do remember that one of my Canadian friends, one of my Canadian classmates encouraged me to, um, to go on an interview for a post, a position with a TV program that was about to be launched that would have been teaching English to, um, to Korean people, right? A TV program. So they were looking for people who could be hosts on the program, teachers on the program, so that they could, you know, send out these emissions to um, the Korean, um, Korean society, Korean people. So I spoke with, so I told this friend, I said, no, I can't do this. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think I have the right accent. He said, but you're Canadian. And that's true. I was in, I was in Korea um, as a Canadian, because I got the scholarship based on my Canadian citizenship. So I am both Canadian and Trinidadian. So I told him, um, yeah, I can't do this. I don't have the right accent. I know I don't have the right accent or the accent that they would be looking for is what I sh is how I should put that. And he said, no, go ahead. You go ahead and do it. They won't know the difference. <laughs> so, you know, I went and did the interview and they stopped me like maybe halfway and they're like, um, where are you from? And I, I kind of blushed because I realized I had been caught out and I said, well, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. They said, yeah, because we're detecting some vowels, you know, we're detecting some vowels. That's how they put it. They didn't come out and say, you don't have the right accent. You don't have the accent that we're looking for. And so, yeah, so that explains, you know, that's one experience that I've had in the English speaking world, in the world of English as a second language teaching that really um, really brought home to me the fact that people who have particular accents often get more opportunities in that particular context, maybe even beyond that context, right? So that's one point, that's, that's one point of the project. The other thing is that um, I wanted to do this project for my Trini or Trinbegu brothers and sisters, especially as well, because I, the people who, many of the people who have taken part in this project are at least bilingual. Many of them are more than bilingual, speaking maybe at least three languages. And I would like Trinidadians to, and Tabagonians, I would like Trinidadians and Tabagonians, Trinbagonians to really consider exploring languages beyond the traditional ones that we do in school, like French and Spanish. And, you know, there's the, the world is a, a cornucopia of language experiences and there is so much to explore. So I hope that in hearing um, the different volunteers, first of all, telling you what languages they speak and then actually making an attempt in some cases to speak Trini English when they may have no connection to Trinidad. May in one case, the person had never heard of Trinidad. He didn't even, even up until the point where he did the recording and recorded the poem, he had no idea where Trinidad was, had never heard the word Trinidad, far less for Trinidad and Tobago, and, um, but he really made a good attempt at reading the poem. And he was, I'll give it away, he's from Madagascar, okay? So that's the other thing. I would really like Trinis to be encouraged to um, consider learning other languages um, beyond, but also including Spanish and French. And by the way, I know that traditionally in, in our school system, very often we come away from high school not being able to have a conversation in Spanish and not being able to have a conversation in French but I'm not sure why it's so difficult because it's really not once you once the languages are taught in uh in the most effective way and once we learn in the most effective way we really should be able to come away being able to speak different languages me personally I went to SAGS and I learned French and Spanish for the whole seven years you know, at that time they had A-levels. I did 
when I, by the time I had gone through all the specialization and subjects that you do, I had ended, I ended up doing French, Spanish and Lit for my full seven years in, in um, high school. And I can tell you by the time maybe I was in maybe form three, form four, I could hold a relatively decent conversation. Definitely by the time I graduated from form six, I was quite, quite good. Okay. And that's just because me personally, I put some things in place that really, really worked for me. So um, if anybody's wondering out there how you can implement Spanish um, and even French and other languages, and I'm going to make a plug for Mandarin as well. If you're wondering how to implement those, those, if you're wondering how to implement those languages locally, feel free to have a conversation to me. I would be very open to that. And I can tell you, it's not as difficult as it seems. I'm not sure why it's taken us decades upon decades to make this happen, but everybody in Trinidad should be, um, should be at least bilingual, maybe trilingual, because we are bilingual. Once you can speak standard English and Creole English, we are all bilingual, okay? So we should at least, all of us, be trilingual. All right, so that's, one, that's the other thing, encouraging Trinis to speak other languages. Also, I wanted to give Trinidadians and Tabagonians an opportunity to express that empathetic side of what should be anybody's personality. When we, you know, Trinis, Trinis, we love to laugh. We love to poke fun at people. We love the little peacock and all of that, right? Which is fair and fine. But when we hear people from around the world making an attempt to honor our language by reading this poem as, as, as well as they can. And I got to tell you, in many instances, the volunteers were very concerned. They would come to me and say, you know, via WhatsApp or email or whatever, after they had sent in their submissions and asked me, did I do a good enough job? Did I get it? You know, so I want you to know that people really try to honor our dialect. And so please, in your comments and responses, yes, if you want to poke your little fun and so on, feel free. But but also please be kind and be very um, considerate and thoughtful about how you do that. Just put yourself in the place of the volunteers. Um, if you were asked to read a poem, in not standard Spanish or standard French, but Creole Spanish or Creole French or some other language that maybe you've never been, ex been exposed to, you know, how do you think you would do, right? So keep that in mind. And um, also the point of the this project is to promote the craft market that this poem is about. And um, also, to, you know, just to, um, to build up some interest in the craft market. And finally, the point of this project is also to um, introduce people to my work, my poetry, my books, my art, you know, um, and to um, just let people know where they can find my work, what it's like, and so on. I write both standard English poetry and Creole English poetry and other things in between. And I'm also an artist, as I mentioned. So um, those things are going to be um, shared to some extent through the through this project now some of you may be wondering about creole english and i really should explain that so um creole english is different from standard english and here in trinidad and not just in trinidad but i think across the caribbean and across languages um we we would we have two different forms of language we would have say standard english or standard french or standard dutch or standard Spanish, so English, Spanish, French, Dutch. Um, I'm not sure about the Dutch because I don't know as much about the Dutch islands, but somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that across the board, we, each island would have its own version of maybe standard, the standard, um, the standard national language and then their own, you know, Creole form of that language. And I can speak for the English speaking Caribbean. Um, we all have like, we all, you know, we all have like standard English and then Creole English. But if you go to the different English speaking islands of the Caribbean, you would see that these, each island has its own Creole English accent with, you know, um, with vocabulary that would be distinct among the different islands. So in this project, the focus is on Trini English, which is also distinct, like I mentioned, from Tobago, the Tobago dialect, okay? So um, 
The other thing I wanted to mention was how I pull this project together, because I know some people may be curious about that. So um, what I did was, first of all, I connected with people that I knew. I knew that I couldn't cover every continent on my own, but I connected with people that I knew. I have relatives in Canada and the United States, um, in Canada on both sides of my family and in the United States on my dad's side of the family. And so um, thankfully my cousins, two of my cousins, two or three of my cousins, um, well, two of my cousins for this project and one for another project that I may rule out a little later, um, we're happy to join in and I really thank them, Miles and Dale. You're gonna hear from them when um, the America section rules out. And then I also approached like friends, um, friends who I met uh, on, you know, during my travels, like um, especially in the Far East and um, also the friends or family or friends and family. So it was like, who I knew and then who of the people I knew, who they knew. And so that's how I managed to connect with people on different continents. And um, also I knew some people who I had met in Trinidad who um, were from other cultures and I met in different situations. And I did also invite some of those people to take part in the project and thankfully they did. And I really wanna thank them as well. And also, um, some of the volunteers, like some of the people I only met for the first time through this project were kind enough to connect me with people that they knew as well. So that's how I made the connections. On top of which, when I really was stumped, I approached um, our embassies and they were kind enough to, uh, some of them were kind enough to connect me with people that they knew. So I would like to especially say a special thank you to the Mexican embassy, the German embassy, and the embassy of the Netherlands, okay? So I really wanna give a special hail out, hail out to those particular entities and just say a big gracias, danke, and um, well, I can't say it in Dutch, but thank you so, so much, right? And um, finally, I would um, like to just say a special thank you to people who really were instrumental in making this project come alive and come to fruition. So first of all, I would really like to say a special thank you to the person who got this started in the first place. Her name is Debo, and I will not give her full name. Um, I'll just give her first name because I don't think she would want me to give her full name, but Debo from South Africa. Um, she is a person who said that she tried reading the poem in her best Trini accent, and she's the one who helped get the ball rolling. So Debo, thank you very, very much. I would like to say a special thank you to the volunteers. And I, I don't really like the word volunteers. I find it's kind of boring and I don't know, it, does, it sounds a little too clinical or something, but I would like to see my language adventurers from around the world who have happily, willingly taken, enthusiastically, eagerly, generously taken part in this project, giving up their time, even when they were super busy and giving up their talent as well. Cause I mean, some of them did some superb readings and um, their enthusiasm and so on. I really want to thank my um, language adventurers from around the world. The other thing I want to thank my language adventurers for is the fact that they have really, um, they have really kind of made themselves very vulnerable by doing this project. And I really wanna honor that because I told them that in, when, I, when I approached them, I did tell them that we Trinis love to laugh and have a good time. And I'm sure a lot of Trinis are gonna find some of the readings very entertaining, right? <laughs> you know, and so they really allowed themselves to be vulnerable and to possibly be exposed to some pekong and that kind of thing. So I want to thank them for being humble enough and courageous enough and willing enough to still go ahead and do this. And I would also like to thank my family, people, and I'm gonna call you by name and you know exactly what you did. Miles, Dale, Cheryl, Hai, Raleigh, Arthur, Ashel. Um, thank you so very much for, um, 
for making my job that much easier, you know, and for, for joining in the fun. I would like to thank you for making my job that much easier and or joining in the fun. I would like to thank James, who I met uh, in, an, in, a, um, in a networking group uh, online. And um, he has a Facebook group. I'm going to call, I'm going to let you know what it is. It's called English Conversation Club by English Arrow. I'm going to put that in the, below the video in the, in the, um, under the video in the description section. And James has a wonderful conversation group where you can take part in these conversation uh, classes. They're not really classes. They're more like just opportunities to chat. If you're learning English and you're looking for opportunities to practice your English with other people who are also learning how to speak English. And uh, the classes are free. And um, they happen, I think, almost every day of the week, if not every day of the week. You can join his Facebook group, English Conversation Club by English Aru. And I promise you, you're going to have a wonderful time. I sat in on one of the meetings and it was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. And they are well, well uh, managed and moderated. So I think you would enjoy that if you're learning English and you're looking for that kind of experience and um, practice. I would also like to thank um, other people like who, who really helped me connect with um, or try to help me connect with people from other countries like Natalie, Orson, Udo, and um, I'd like to thank Claudia as well. You know, all of you tried really hard and I just want to really, really thank you and tell you that I am so very grateful. I would also like to thank Ruth. I won't give away her full name because you're going to hear her later on when the project really gets rolling. And Ruth, you know who you are. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you obliged and, and decided to join the project. And um, I'm looking forward to people um, getting to know your wonderful talent. And um, I would also like to thank David. Um, David for... Um, reading my poem in Trini English, in his Trini English accent, because he is Trini, and I wanted people to hear a, an accent apart from my own, from my, from my own, the one that you'll hear in my own reading of the poem, because as you can hear, I have a little accent, uh, but you know, um, when I read, when I read Creole English, you probably wouldn't realize. I hope, you know, you could let me know what you think. And, um, Finally, I would really, really like to thank Carlene. Carlene, you know that I could not do this without you. I thank you for your generosity and your graciousness. Without you, the videos would not happen. They would not have happened. So I really, really want to thank all of these people. If there's anybody that, I, that I've left out who really should have been included, please forgive me. Um, please forgive my forgetfulness. It's not forgetfulness because of ingratitude. Um, it's just that I'm a one lady show trying to pull this thing together. And uh, in the middle of all the doing and the busyness and the getting this, that, and the other um, finalized, I may have inadvertently forgotten some people. So please forgive me, but know that what you contributed was appreciated. So that's it. And um, I really hope that you enjoy what is to come and um you know i really hope that you enjoy this project as i mentioned it's going to take a couple months probably to rule everything out and if you are trini i would just like to encourage you you can also take the challenge because the volunteers or the language adventurers my language adventurers had the challenge of not only of of two things one they had to read in trini english and two some of them actually tried to read the poem with expression. Now, some of them you will think, but how they read in as if they're not reading with any expression. But I could tell you when you're reading something in another language and you're trying just to focus on the pronunciation, the expression goes out the window because you're just trying to get the pronunciation right. So I think that's what happened with some of the volunteers. So please appreciate that. And I would challenge you, my fellow Trimb Trimbegonians, um, there is going to be a video coming up soon, maybe within the next day or two, with a karaoke version 
of the poem that you can read along to. There will be no audio, just the text. And you can try reading the poem. See if you can read it with expression because that's a whole other thing. Whether you're reading a poem in, in standard English or Creole English, it is not always easy and it does not always come naturally to everybody. So I'm sending out this challenge to everybody. If you are from another country or if you are a Trini or a Trinbagonian, please feel free to try taking the Talk Trini Talk challenge. So until next time, have fun and please follow along. And um, oh my goodness, you know, one thing I forgot to mention is that um, one of the points of this project as well is to carry, up, carry out a fun linguistic experiment that would allow people in the field of linguistics to study how people speak, maybe how people learn other languages, how people handle pronunciation and things like that. I thought it would be an interesting study for people in the field of linguistics. So that, that's the other reason why I decided to do this project. So yeah, if you are looking forward to following the project and getting instant notifications when new videos are shared, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. There is more to come. Okie dokie.